In this video, we'll be taking apart the iPhone 16 Plus. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. Now this phone can be taken apart from the back or the front, depending on which parts you need to replace. But first, there are two panel up screws on the bottom which need to be removed. To remove the screen, you'll need to apply heat to the front using either a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry the screen off. I prefer to use a hairdryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. Now when you're running your pry tool around the screen to pry the screen off, be careful of the flex cables for the screen which are still attached to the main board on the left side. So you don't want to go in too deep to damage them. Once the screen is pried up from the frame, you're going to lift it up from the right side to the left. Now there are two tri-point screws which are holding down the covers over the connectors. Once the covers have been removed, the flex cables can be disconnected from the main board. Here's a better look at the back of the screen. There's a single Phillips screw on top, which is holding down the front light sensor. Moving to the back, the same needs to be done to remove the back cover. You'll need to use either a hairdryer or a heat gun to apply heat to the back cover, so you can loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry it off. Again, I prefer to use a hairdryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. The cables on the back glass are on the right side, so the glass will have to be lifted up from the left to the right. Now two tri-point screws need to be removed. At this point the battery cable can be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. Looking at the back class, we can see the wireless charging, graphite film to help transfer heat, as well as this flex cable which leads to the LED flash, and back microphone. Once the single Phillips screw and cover have been removed, we have a better look at that microphone. Now when it comes to removing the battery on the iPhone 16 and 16 Plus, it's not a regular adhesive like it was before. There's a new electrically conductive adhesive which needs to be debonded for the battery to be removed. And in order to do that, you're going to need some alligator clips, as well as a 9 volt battery. You can safely go up to 30 volts to shorten the debonding process and remove the battery quicker. With a 9 volt battery, it should take about a minute and a half. The red alligator clip needs to be clipped onto the tab on the bottom of the battery, and the black one can be grounded to the screw next to the speaker.
All right, it's been a little over a minute and a half. There you go. So here's a look at the adhesive underneath the battery. This battery is a 4,674 milliamp hour battery. Now, in my opinion, it is easier to pry off this battery with this new method compared to using Apple's pull tabs. However, I'd prefer an adhesive pull pouch like ones used on many other phones since those are easy to use and don't require additional hardware or tools to pry them off. At this point, 17 additional Phillips screws as well as one tri-point screw need to be removed. Here's a look at the Taptic engine or vibrator motor. This is the 12 megapixel front facing camera, as well as the face ID sensor next to it. The 12 megapixel ultra wide lens is located on top, and the 48 megapixel primary camera is on the bottom. The main camera has sensor shift OIS or optical image stabilization. Looking at this assembly, we see the 5G millimeter wave antenna, as well as another antenna flex cable on the corner. Looking at the back, we see the top earpiece speaker assembly. Five standoff screws and two more Phillips screws need to be removed. Here's a better look at the motherboard. Now two additional standoff screws need to be removed, as well as seven more Phillips screws and two more tri-point screws. This is the bottom speaker assembly. At this point, an additional standoff screw and five more Phillips screws need to be removed. Here's a look at the bottom microphone assembly, as well as the pressure relief hole. Three additional Phillips screws need to be removed, two of which are on the frame on either side of the charger port. Here's the charger port assembly. And this is a placeholder for where the SIM reader would go on versions of this phone which would have a SIM reader. So here's the placeholder itself. This flex cable is for the power button as well as the camera control button. This one leads to a secondary microphone on top as well as an antenna assembly. And this one's for the volume keys on the side. If you need to replace the flex cable for the power button, camera button, or the volume keys, there are additional Phillips screws which would have to be removed, 
that are holding the metal plate or cover in place on either side of the frame. And the same goes for this flex cable on top. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 7.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put it back together. Once everything's back in place, power on the phone, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.